Hey there, welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast where faith and works are empowered. With every episode, we're embracing our multi-layered lives with faith, know-how, and grit. I'm your host, Dr. Jasmine, and I'm ready to go global with you. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast where faith and works are empowered. I'm Dr. Jasmine, and I'm so excited that you decided to join me today. This podcast season has been super great, super phenomenal, and today is going to be none le- no less different. I have with me a dynamic global girl who is with us to share a little bit more about the black hair experience, y'all. So we are in for a treat. But first, I would love, love, love to introduce her. I have with me the phenomenal Alicia Brooks, who is a Midwest girl with a big city ambition. She is a highly rated motivational entrepreneur and curator of experiences. After years of creating in the digital space, she launched her first business hello tea in 2016 and soon after she launched her second business the black hair experience in 2019 she is one who is known for creating ideas and turning them into a movement she has been celebrating the black hair and beauty since then and so today i would love 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 for alicia to introduce herself to the girl global community Hey, hey, I am Alicia Brooks. I am the CEO and creator of the Black Hair Experience, and I'm so excited to be here to have this conversation with you today. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we met at Essence Festival in, Essence Festival in New Orleans. Um, so it was great to kind of touch base with you, and I'm so happy that you decided to join me today to have this conversation. So I just want to jump right in. Why? The black hair experience as a business, what made you say this is something that I can create uh, a business out of out of, and celebrate the culture all at once? Yeah, that's a great question. So I had visited a selfie museum in New York. It was called the Museum of Ice Cream. And it was fun. It was cute. And I kept thinking to myself, we don't have anything like this that celebrates our experiences. Um, And in this space of everybody sharing and amplifying their experiences on social media, um, that's really kind of how I came up with the Black Hair Experience. Um, And I was like, I wanted to create something that was fun and photo worthy, but something that also they carry like depth and, and meaning. And I, I couldn't think of a better thing than, than black hair. It's, it's universal between our community. You know, we all have something that is similar, um, even though all of our stories are different. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing. It's so, it's so robust. Everybody's experiences are so diverse. Um, so it kind of made the perfect I guess if you wanted to call it like category or lane for creating like an interactive space. Mm, I love it. You know, when I first, uh, I guess it caught wind of the black hair experience in the DMV at the national Harbor in particular, uh, I was like, Oh my God, I can't, I gotta make it there. I gotta make it. I didn't, unfortunately I was dealing with a lot of challenges at that time, but I definitely know so many of my friends and colleagues who visited the exhibit and it was so cute, super creative. And I think that you have a niche that is just flourishing in this industry. Um, so tell me a little bit more about how you started it um, in the way of creating, I guess, is a, a, a photo worthy space and w- what you've done with it since launching in 2019. Like, I know that you had the location in 2019. Is it... Um, you a, a traveling if you will exhibit or museum type thing like just help the global girls understand exactly what the black hair experience is yeah yeah so when when we first opened um in 29 well actually the pandemic delayed the physical opening of our space until november 2020 but up until then we were kind of like sharing hair stories across social media um, and doing a lot of things like digitally to like celebrate and and gather people just because you know like 2020 was heavy, you know? So um, in November, I was like, if I could just get this open for 30 days, I'm gonna be good. Mm. So we opened in Atlanta, um, our first physical space, um, and it was supposed to be a 30 day pop-up, but it went so well. And the demand was still there, um, you know, just made the decision to, to keep the space open. And then of course, I don't live in Atlanta. I live in the DMV area. So next steps was like it it makes sense to open a space here and that's what kind of led to 
the DMB location opening. And, you know, since then we've done different pop-ups um, from LA to Brooklyn. We were in Texas and New Orleans most recently. Um, and we're headed to, um, to Houston and to Miami um, before we close out the year. Um, so what really started as a, a short-term pop-up in Atlanta, uh, which that space is still our like permanent location. It's still open. It's been open since then, um, you know, has really grown. And that's really been um, due to the, you know, the overwhelming amount of support that we've received from, from the community. That's so great. That's so great. And I love the trajectory of what you've done so far. I celebrate you sis, for, for sure. In that way, I, I, I can't imagine <laughs> that you imagine that it would flourish this much, but kudos to you and those on your team who are helping you make this a true experience for those in our community and beyond for sure. Thank you. Uh, so tell me, have you been in the beauty industry? Do you have a background in beauty industry, culture, makeup, hair? Like, is that any of the, any of your background? What's your background? No, I'm actually a graphic designer. Um, gotcha. so, <laughs> so um, that sounds like creative, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I guess I say by trade, um, like that's still my thing. That's my passion, um, is creating. I, and I still create, still a graphic designer, um, so that's kind of the visual aspect of the black hair experience and like, right. you know, why that part aligned for me. But of course, like as a black woman with black hair, who's had, I've been natural, you know, um, really since 2014, I want to okay. say. Um, cool. and before then, of course I, I, I had, I went through transition and had a relaxer. So I've seen both sides, mm -hmm. uh, of of that meaning I you know the relaxed side the natural side and I'm a mom um so it's really important for me I have a daughter and two sons um you know to create meaningful experiences and spaces they can see themselves in because I think the one thing that people say when they come in the space is you know I've never I've never seen anything like this or you know I wish I would have had something like this when I was growing up I know we all do um and I want I want their stories to be different you know I there was a space created like that. My mom created it, <laughs> you know? So um, I think a lot of like my passion behind the experiences, no, I don't, I'm not a, a hairstylist or uh, a makeup artist or any of those things. I'm a consumer of those mm. services, right? Oh, I love that. Um, but I think just as, as qualified as I, you know, I, as I am as a black woman to speak on what my black hair experience is, um, a lot of, the input or feedback or opinions I've gotten were from other Black women, um, share pieces of their stories and their experiences. And I think the Black hair experience is, is evolving, it's changing, um, just as our hair changes and how we choose to wear it or rock it or celebrate it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of like my goal, right, is for it to continue to evolve. I know there's still pieces of the experience that we need to talk about, the Black men's experience, um, and, and so many other sides of still Black women's hair experience. Um, so I think that's my goal, but the passion is really behind, like, really creating beautiful things, um, and that's kind of where that graphic design background comes from. Our I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that you're able to not only take your experience as a Black woman with natural hair and have experienced the other side of natural hair, which is relaxed hair, um, and then couple that with your background in graphic design to create something so creative and innovative that has yielded you this much success. Um, so if there's someone who's never visited your Black hair experience a pop up, if you will, what can they expect? They come in, what's the experience like? If you can share a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So um, you can definitely expect to feel like you're right at home with your friends, even if you show up alone. <laughs> um, we kind of pride ourselves on creating like a like a home girl or girlfriend experience. So if you come with friends, you know, you're going to have a great time. If you come alone, you're going to have a great time because we're going to make sure the energy is there. We're going to make sure that you feel celebrated, um, loved on, and most importantly, seen. Um and you're going to take some photos. You're going to have some fun. Um, in Atlanta, um, you may come across, like, we have some little facts and different, like, did you know contributions from from people, from Black people um, made 
um, in the hair care industry. So I'm not going to say that we're like a historical museum. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. definitely meant to be more light and airy and fun, um, just because everything in this world seems so heavy. Um, and I know we can have deep, heavy conversations about our hair, um, but this space is really meant to be celebratory and joyful. Um, and so I think, um, again, you can, you know, expect to maybe hear, hear some great music that taps into something from your, you know, your experience growing up to things that are happening currently. You may see a little art um, by Black women artists. Um, so overall, just like a little bit of everything, we we frequently have like marketplaces and shopping events to give other small black owned businesses an opportunity to put the, them, you know, themselves in front of our audiences. Um, we do a lot of outreach work. So we do a lot of um, workshops for young girls in schools um, all the way through college. We recently um, have done a string of workshops for Spelman. Um, so um, there's a little bit of everything there. <laughs> So nice, so nice. So what role does your faith play in your business and your brand? You know, you, you, you stepped out on your faith and you started a business in 2016, then you started a business in 2019. What role does your faith play in your business and or your brand? Oh, it's leading, right? Um, and I know that the only reason why I've been able to make the strides that I have thus far is because of my faith and knowing, um, even when I'm doubting myself, like, you know, I'm reassured, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, in my faith that, you know, he didn't put me here to leave me. Um, and even when things like it may be on a wing and a prayer, you know, he, he shows up. Mm -hmm. um, so it definitely, um, you know, is at the forefront um, and, and how I'm navigating and leading in these, in this space. Nice, nice. So you talked a little bit about uh, what the Black hair experience is, and you, you mentioned evolving. I want to talk a little bit about evolving. I could see um, you being approached by folks who are advocates in the space of the Crown Act, or I could see you being approached by to do lots of other things in this space because of the niche that you've carved out for yourself and because of the faith that you had to do it, right? So what can we expect? Like, what's... The, I, I heard I heard the mission, I heard the vision, but where do you see the Black hair experience evolving? Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny you mentioned the Crown Act. I, I, we had the opportunity to do some really great work with them um, in D.C. and in Texas um, around Crown Day um, in terms of like promoting the petition and all of that, you know, pushing, you know, like I said, that narrative for my kids and them having a better experience growing up with their hair, you know, and it being celebrated. But in terms of like the evolution of the experience, of course, I want to kind of put, create as many spaces and events and experiences across the country and not just to the major cities, right? I'm from Kansas City. So, um, you know, these types of experiences and spaces don't exist, but they should. Um, and they deserve to, you know, experience or partake in that joy as well. So, you know, in terms of like what I would love to see, um, I would love to be able to have this event in, in, in as many cities that, that will allow, right? Um, but the overarching goal, right, is just like expanding upon our outreach. Um, like we've been doing really good work, I said, like I said, with some of the youth organizations and just figuring out how we can maybe bring that experience to classrooms that may not be able to bust their kids to a space in Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. Just to kind of reinforce that message that, you know, all black hair is beautiful, regardless of how you choose to wear it. Um, and, you know, even the idea that it shouldn't be a conversation in, at schools or at the water cooler at work. Um, or any of those things. So as, as much as I can, it would be, you know, kind of like blowing up our outreach. Mm, dope. That's super dope. Are you interested in partnering with any school districts or any nonprofits oh, in that space? Or have you already been doing that? Yeah, we've definitely partnered with uh, quite a few different nonprofits and a lot of the the school um, districts and stuff we've worked with were, were in, have been in Atlanta. Um, and we had an opportunity to do uh, work with a couple in Maryland. Um, and so the goal would be, you know, we're open, of course, to any. So if there is anyone that is, you know, a teacher or an administrator at a school like and and an experience like this would be of, you know, they feel of value to their to their girls. Is definitely something we're open to. Nice, nice. 
I'm sure there are lots of listeners out there, part of the, the Girl Go Global community, who would be interested in partnering and who have access to the right people to get you in front of to present um, your programming and or, you know, pop up, if you will, um, within in schools or, you know, even in the communities. I love that. Uh, but I want to um, talk a little bit about, you know, your know-how. You started two businesses <laughs> within a, a short span of time. Um, I want you to share any strategies you have for any of the global girls out there who are seeking to start businesses, start ventures, start creative ideas, and, and or carve out a niche, if you will, in a space that's not, tra- that's, that's not been found and not been paid, if you will, um, for them, what strategies do you have for anyone out there who's starting businesses and wanting to, you know, carve out a niche in their own lane? Yeah, in terms of strategies, <laughs> I'm probably like not the best planner. <laughs> and I should be. I should, I'm a notebook girl, but I as I as people say I'm we're cre- I'm a creative. So I kind of I'm like, oh, this seems like a great idea. <laughs> Like, what do I need to do to make this happen? But I would definitely say, um, take the time and really think about the idea from start to finish and plan it out. Um, And don't be afraid to lean into your village. I think it took me a long time um, and I'm still working on it to to lean into this this amazing support system that I have around me that 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 saw the vision even at times when I didn't. and I know that that may not be everyone's story because, you know, you, you get told no a lot. <laughs> and and the idea of trying to persevere seems like exhausting. <laughs> um, but I think that the the biggest thing is to hold on to, to not giving up. It, it's going to get difficult. You're going to be told no. Because there are going to be a lot of times that people don't see what you see. A lot of times people don't see don't see it until it's complete. It's over. It's finished. Right. Um, don't get stuck there because it's easy to say this is too challenging. Um, I don't know the next steps. And I, I will say um, really utilizing some of these platforms because I have slid into some LinkedIn, you know, DMs, if you want to call it, um, to like shoot my shot. And like 99 percent of them go unanswered, you know, and that's OK. Because I just need one person to answer. Mm-hmm. So um, I think for me, those would be the biggest things because entrepreneurship is hard. Like I know, like I've been, I've worked in corporate America. I had a nine to five. Like I've been there, so I know how it feels. To be like, oh, I don't want to do this, but mm-hmm. that nine to five, it, it stop at five, right? No. So, <laughs> entrepreneurship <laughs> is like. 24 7 365 mm-hmm. it, it is very easy to get discouraged when it's good it's great but when it's when it's slow when it may not be your season mm-hmm. that's the test <laughs> all right alicia don't take a check because i feel like you gotta preach on your voice now <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i love what you said i'm gonna start back roll that run that back what you said people don't always see what you see no, and despite they... that, you keep going. That's so good. That's like so many times you hear people say that they don't have the level of support. They don't have, you, you hear people just making random posts on social about people who didn't support them in entrepreneurship and their friends, their family. Like people don't see what you see, but you got to be visionary enough, right? You got to be that visionary leader enough to kind of see it for yourself and keep going despite who's who's behind you cheering you on. I love that. And then, right, then you said about, you know, shooting your shot. And even if they don't answer, you keep going. So that kind of uh, goes back to what you said about, you know, people not always seeing what you see. They might not see the value now, but best believe in the future, people will be contacting you if you just keep going, right? You know, even our encounter, you know, I spoke to you and asked if you would be interested the worst you can tell me is no and then if that's the case we don't ever gotta see each other no more so like people just get so super nervous about you know communicating with people they don't know and being engaged or just kind of asking a quick question hey would you be interested i would love to talk to you about x i would love for you to you know share me to offer value to you or see how we can offer some level of synergy those conversations can go a long way. And I can say personally that I have built 
a lot of relationships just on a conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, people that I just met at a networking event and who we are still connected. We may just be doing connection online, but we're still connected. I can always reach out and say, hey, let's do lunch or hey, let's jump on a Zoom to talk about this idea that I have. I think you'll be a good fit. It's all about um, relationships, networking. And I know a lot of people say these days, like, you know, networking and collaboration is the currency these days. So many people just get connections or get the plug just because just off GP of knowing somebody. So I love, love, love what you just shared for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when we talk about courage, the fact the Girl Go Global community is all about that faith, that know how that grit to reach our God given potential to reach without those things that God placed on our hearts to achieve. And we do so with all of the all of the sauce, all of the the impact and by embracing our multi-layered lives, right? And so when it comes to the courage to face the day, to win the day, and to get up and say, I'm gonna keep going to get up and say, I'm going to curate something for people that may or may not understand what I'm trying to do. What would you say? What keeps you full of courage? What gives you that grit every day to say, I'm going to keep going to keep continue to build this black hair experience in the way that you're doing? So it's kind of twofold. Like today, if you ask me that, I'm a hundred percent tell you like, it's my kids. Mm. It's like I see the impact that creating this business has even done for my daughter's creativity like she's like mom I googled you you came up you know like and and I'm gonna I'm gonna own a business when I grow up like I I don't I didn't come from um you know like the best upbringings right like I, I grew up you know in the projects and I was the first in my family to go to college and the first in my family to do x y and z um you know so then it was the determination to not like to not fail, right? To be better than the circumstances I came from. Right now, it, I'm focused on creating a better place for them and more opportunities and exposure for them. Mm. And seeing our guests are really looking back and realizing like the impact that your decisions, your actions, your mood, your behaviors really have. On, on your on your children nice. and I didn't I didn't see that like I, the impact right I mean my, they were babies now she's eight and you know we can actually have conversations and I can really see like she'll she she wants all the t-shirts and she tells people she works at the black hair experience oh. it is it is like oh I am over overwhelmed with emotion um mm -hmm. and seeing like that so I'm like well I can't give up because if I give up, then, you know, that'll be the, the character trait that she consumes from it. When it gets so hard, I'm just going to stop. Or when it's difficult, I'm going to stop. And I, I think that's what is like really keeping me going is that we, I, I, there was a mom conference last year. I think their theme was like legacy. Uh, and really trying to create something uh, for them to maybe step into or, or take over or participate in. And I know that seems like so maybe small because like it was like, oh, family, family, family. But like it that didn't that didn't click initially. <laughs> like, mm. That I was very much determined to for, for self to leave a mark or make some type of difference for myself. Um, mm. But I think now it, it's I'm, I just move differently in terms of like as tired as I might be, or yesterday was a day full of no's and I feel extremely discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be some yeses at some point and just, just continuing to, to work towards them. You never going to get a yes. If you give up at the no's. Mm. So. I love that. Mm. Never going to get a yes. If you give up at no. I love that. And thank you for sharing. I know that, um, leaving a legacy is important but that legacy you leave where it sounds like your daughter is going to pick up where you left off that's got to be the most heartwarming thing that a parent could ever feel even at the tender age of eight years old mm -hmm. that's so good so what I'll say 
what it, does it mean for girls to go global? What would you say? I have had a great conversation with you, Alicia, and this has been so excited to learn more about you and your business and to learn more about the future of the Black hair experience. But when I say what it means for girls to go global, what, do, what would you say? Well, I think my take could be a little different, right? Um, I, for me, I guess going global would be what are the opportunities that you are creating for others? Because mm. I can go and create things and people can know me and, oh, you made this and you did it. But what opportunities have you created for others? What doors have you opened for others, right? So the, so the work and the greatness can continue. I love it. Mm. Wow. That's good. I had to sit in that for a moment. That's why I, was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that's like, you know, I guess that's just my take on it, right? When you talk about leaving, going global, the global. <laughs> and that's the purpose of me asking, because I want to hear everyone's take and everyone's take is different. And so I appreciate you sharing yours because that may have been one of the best responses I've got. Mm. Anywho. I have been talking to Miss Alicia Brooks of the Black Hair Experience. If you have not visited one of her pop-ups, you are missing a treat. And I too need to circle back. I was just in Atlanta. I wasn't even sure. Um, I was just in Atlanta about a week ago. I didn't know that you still had a, a pop-up there or a location there. Um, uh, can you tell us um what we can expect? I know early on you said that you had a few other locations, but do you have a location in Atlanta where people can actually visit now and yes. so let us know what we can expect to you know at least kind of partake in this experience yeah absolutely we are open in Atlanta permanently we're open mm. on Saturday and Sunday um, we constantly are doing events in that space um, but you can definitely find more information on Atlanta its location and hours as well as some of our other events that are happening in other cities nice. um, at theblackhairexperience.com and even on our socials, if that's your thing, um, every, uh, at the Black Hair Experience across all platforms. Oh, I love that. This is going to be great. I was just in Atlanta. If I had known, I would have visited. But I will be back. I think I'm going to Invest Fest in September. Yeah. I'm um, not sure if you plan to be there, but it seems like everybody's going to be there. So why not me be there? But <laughs> Anyway, um, for sure, um, I, next time I'm always in Atlanta, so um, I hope to be able to pop up at the pop-up. Hello? So, nonetheless, this has been the Girl Go Global Podcast, where faith and works are empowered. If you have not liked, shared, and subscribed, don't forget to do so, because I would love, love, love to hear what you, uh, are, how you are enjoying the content. I would love, love, love for you to share it. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share it with a friend. We are embracing our multi-layer lives, faith, know-how, and grit. So girl, go 